Walsh and right now I am studying to become a Master of Business and Internationalization. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the Zwicky Box method as a creativity technique. But first, what is a creativity technique? Creativity techniques are procedures for enhancing creativity in the idea generation process, ranging from simple what-if questions to complex methodologies like synectics. They are common and useful methods in business practice, especially in the front end of innovation management. Creativity and innovation are critical to organisational growth and performance improvement, which is why they are receiving increasing attention from managers. So, what exactly is a Zwicky box? We're going to have to go back all the way to the 1960s to learn about a man named Fritz Zwicky. Zwicky is a renowned Swiss astronomer who made significant contributions in many areas of astronomy. He is most famous for developing something called morphological analysis as a method for structuring and investigating the total set of relationships contained in multi-dimensional, non-quantifiable problem complexes. That sounds a bit complicated, doesn't it? Well, it's actually not supposed to be. Zwicky developed the box to solve problems by structuring potential solutions in a grid, so he could quickly identify a combination of solutions. Many problems can be very messy and resistant to systemization, for example, policy formulation or designing disaster relief plans. Zwicky boxes can help in finding creative solutions by considering all conceivable solutions. So, how does the grid work? Morphological analysis works by first identifying the important dimensions of the problem, which make up the variables or parameters of the model. A Zwicky box is then constructed where each of the parameters is placed in its own column. Different values of a parameter go into separate rows for that column. Picking a cell from each column results in picking a unique solution to the problem. By trying out different combinations of cells from the table, you can quickly and systematically explore many different solutions. In this sample box, there are two attributes with two variations, which means that there is a total of four possible combinations. Let's try with an example. Let's say you want to buy a new car. What are some of the main variables you might consider? Probably the engine size, the fuel type of the car, what kind of transmission it uses, the body type, its colour, and possibly the climate control options. These are going to be our main parameters, so I'm going to give them a column each. Now, we fill in the different values of each parameter. So, for engine size, we can vary from, say, a 1.3 litre engine to a 2 litre engine. Fuel types values would include petrol, diesel or electric, and so on. Once the table is filled out, we have six decision areas or dimensions with three options in each one. If we were to choose one option from each dimension to create a configuration, there are actually 729 possible configurations available to us. I got this figure by multiplying out the variables within each parameter against each other. So that's 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3, which equals 729. A car company realistically is not going to design and produce 729 versions of a car at once. So, limitations are used to constrain the amount of options available. For example, a car company could decide that options like the colour blue, a sports car body type and air conditioning are only available for the 2 litre engine version of the car. It is important to remember that some options available are not practical. For example, a car can only have one engine, and sunroofs are not usually offered on cars with air conditioning. So how do we know which options are practical and also meet our restrictions? We carry out what's called a pairwise comparison of each parameter with every other parameter. This is done using a matrix called the Cross Consistency Assessment Matrix, or CCA Matrix. This is what Zwicky considered his principle of contradiction and reduction. How is it done? I know it sounds difficult and confusing, but once it's broken down for you, you'll see it's logical and straightforward. To make a cross-consistency assessment, we create a grid with each of the parameters across the top, and then again in the same order down the side. An Excel sheet is usually the cleanest way of doing this and also makes it easier to remove any mistakes. Once we have all of our parameters in place, we can begin by removing the illogical options first. So when the same parameters line up with each other, just eliminate those. 
Next, the impractical options have got to go. So here, we wouldn't really consider a car with multiple engine sizes or multiple body types or things like that, so they can be eliminated also. Already, our number of possible combinations has lowered drastically. Lastly, options that are inconsistent with any restraints that we came up with are excluded. So we said earlier a blue version of the car at a sports body type may only be available for a 2 litre engine, so we can eliminate the blue and sports body variable for the other engine sizes and so on. So to summarise the method in the most simple way I can, you first need to identify all of the important parameters of the decision and create a grid or problem space for these decisions. Then, create an exhaustive inventory of all conceivable solutions by putting different variables within each parameter. Next, carry out a cross-consistency assessment matrix by placing all variables against each other on a grid. Once the grid is made, Take into account the constraints and eliminate any inconsistent options. Then you can conclude with a matrix of possible options. Of course, there are drawbacks to a method like Zwicky boxes. The more dimensions, the more options available, and that can make the process extremely complicated for manual examination should computer-based general morphological analysis tools be unavailable. Another challenging aspect to this approach, and possibly the most difficult, is actually limiting the dimensions to the most useful ones. However, these drawbacks aside, morphological analysis can be trusted as a useful, non-quantified method for investigating problem complexes which cannot be treated by formal mathematical methods, causal modelling or simulation. This method allows for all conceivable solutions to be considered, and not just options that one can think of that seem possible therefore is likely to result in combinations of dimensions that would not normally be considered. Sometimes useful solutions are not obvious solutions, and the Zwicky box method helps consider the non-obvious. The advantage of Zwicky boxes isn't into building the ability to think of original ideas, but in systematically exploring many ideas that can lead to surprising insights. Often the problem isn't necessarily coming up with the ideas, it's closing in too early on few solutions. So everybody, I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of how this wiki box method works. Thanks a million for watching.